welcome to this session. The objective of this session is to examine the sources and causes of fluctuations in interest rates relative to one another that is across different types of debt instruments. Look at this figure, you can see here that on the y axis we mention uh, we denote annual yield that means the rate of interest and on the x axis this is the time period. So, some of the key facts you can, you can see here that what we denote here is the yield to maturity that the rate of interest on different types of debt instruments. So, you can see here that corporate bonds that is corporate double triple A bonds, corporate uh, B double B A A bonds, uh, US government long term bonds, state and local government bonds, municipal bonds etc. So, some of the difference that you can see here is that, so you can see that look at for example, government bond and corporate bond. And you can see that the corporate bond for example, looking at this figure you can see that corporate bond the rate of interest is greater than the government bond that is one. And within corporate you can see that the corporate uh, AA bonds rate of interest is less than corporate BAA bonds. And similarly, you look at the short term and long term that actually we have seen in the previous diagram uh, the difference between US uh, government long term bonds and short term bonds at that time we have seen that short term interest rate is even for the government within government uh, short term interest rate is uh, less than long term interest rate. And some of other things that you might have observed that the rate of interest across the globe that means uh, among uh, between countries for example, when you compare rate of interest between India and US you can see that the rate of interest is very very low in India in US in the US uh, for example, for the government bonds uh, it is much much lower in the US as compared to uh, India. And similarly, when you compare for example, Afghanistan uh, you know that the rate of interest in Afghanistan uh, even issued by the Afghanistan government is greater than the rate of interest of India. So, that means you see that there are differences uh, in the rate of interest for different instruments, uh, debt instruments. So, what are the reason for that? What explains the reason for these uh, differences? And over time you can see that it fluctuates, right? For, for example, you can see here is that the corporate BAA bonds uh, how much it was for example, in 1920 it was nearly 8 percentage, but when it comes to see for example, 2010 you can see that uh, is going to be nearly 6 percentage. So, what we explain what makes what are the factors that explain uh, this kind of fluctuation. So, that is the main focus of this session and subsequent few sessions. So, in order to understand the fact is that explain that in the explain the differences in the uh, rate of interest for different types of debt instrument, there are mainly two major approaches to this. One is called risk structure of interest rate and the second one is called term structure of interest rates. Let us now focus on the first one. Uh, in detail the risk structure of interest rate and thereafter we will move to the term structure of interest rate. So, about the risk structure of interest rate let us start with a very basic question why bonds are risky. Normally, bonds are considered as relatively safe investment as compared to uh, secure that uh, stocks, uh, but however, uh, bonds are still risky because of some factors that we let us discuss here. One is interest rate risk. The interest rate risk is that interest rate may rise between the time a bond is purchased and time it is sold uh, reducing the bond price. Suppose the bond price in the future the rate of interest in the future increase suppose the rate of interest increase in the future uh, once the, someone suppose they hear someone uh, bought a, a bond today and then you see after one year when the rate of interest increase then obviously you know that uh, the bond price will decline when he sell it, sell it in the market then the he will incur a capital loss that is one risk 
this is happening due to the interest rate risk the fluctuation uncertainty in the uh, interest rate and second one is called inflation risk that means inflation may turn out to be higher than expected then reducing the real return on holding the bond that is the second risk called inflation risk and the third one uh, is the default risk this is the key issue an important uh, risk associated with uh, bonds uh, this is uh, the default risk default risk means issuer may not make the promised payment on time it may be because the borrower the, the who issued the bond that means the supplier of bonds uh, got into financial trouble maybe became bankrupt or that is one or maybe deliberately he, he or she doesn't want to pay back or maybe some kind of cheating they want to fraud they want to get into so the anyway the main point here is that default risk is the one of the important aspects that makes factor that makes bonds more risky so we, our discussion today is going to be more on this default risk in order to measure the default risk so that the probability that the uh, issuer of the bond supplier of the bond will pay back the borrowed amount and the associated interest payments right so in order to measure that normally this is been done this has been done by rating uh, mainly done by the rating agencies uh, rating agencies they assess the financial strength of firms and other governments and thus help investors identify the company's level of risk and uh, their ability to repay debts there are mainly three broad group of ratings by rating agencies that is relevant to our context one is called bond ratings and the other one is second one is commercial paper ratings and the third one is sovereign ratings is called as uh, rating the governments you know that in every country there are uh, registered credit rating agencies in india there are several rating agencies these are the top credit rating agencies registered under sebi security and exchange board of india these agencies they rate uh, they assess the um, risk uh, default risk of the firms sp by they will uh, assess the credit risk or they will give a rating of each of their uh, debt instruments which are the bond they are issuing in the market first it will undergo uh, undergo a credit rating assessment and accordingly they will get a score rate rating they will be getting and i would suggest uh, you visit their website to get more idea uh, of what is meant by ratings and how do they do and what kind of methodology they use and overall there is a similarity uh, about the methodology they use however still when you go to their website you can see there are lots of differences as well but overall idea is that uh, they are going to measure the financial soundness of the firm the financial health of their firm and the instrument the bond they are issuing for which purpose for which project the feasibility the economic feasibility of that project and then accordingly uh, they will be getting a square rating so for example chrysler you can see here that uh, what they do that you can see that they do the rating for bank loan and they long term they also rate long term debt instruments such as bonds non convertible debentures and preference shares and they also do the uh, rating for short term debt instruments such as um, commercial papers and short term ncds they also rate fixed deposits as well so you can read it from their website that actually the methodology and rating framework adopted by this agency for evaluating the credit risk of various instruments issued by indian corporate is largely similar however they also say that based on the context they will slightly change the methodology the criteria used for uh, the rating of each of their credit instruments and you can also go through another credit rating agencies for example india rating and research uh, you will get more idea about what is meant by uh, what are the methodology they use what kind of rating they do etc so internationally there are three major agencies international credit rating agencies moody's standard and poor and fitch 
and these agencies mostly they do sovereign rating they rate the governments uh, before going to that I, I would suggest visit their website to get the criteria they use so just visit that Fitch ratings com and uh, where you can browse for um, the criteria what they use so from there itself you can see that uh, the rating definition rating products rating process uh, ABC of credit ratings everything they give there so they read the by institutions by sectors they rate corporates covered bonds all this they also rate uh, sovereigns that means sovereign means this means governments they rate uh, national governments they rate India they rate Afghanistan they rate US as well you can also visit the another rating agency standards and poor S&P for short uh, where again you can see that what are the uh, ratings they do the proposed criteria including new and materially changed criteria so you can see that corporates financial institution insurance and they rate actually is infrastructure and governments and structured finance and these are all the sectors uh, they do or uh, the, they do the ratings and again you can see here that the Moody's again uh, you please go through uh, their uh, website and for example you can see and just say that the global long term rating you can see that they have been using some terminology not, not, notations that the triple A, double A, A, B, double A, etc. So let us discuss these in appropriate context. Anyway, I would suggest you please go through this uh, website thoroughly and get to know more about these ratings ideas. So for example, the Moody's global long term rating scale uh, where you can see that they do triple A, triple A means the obligation, the debt obligation rated triple A are judged to be the highest quality subject to the lowest level of credit risk. The default risk is very, very low. This is called prime uh, quality, uh, prime quality debt instruments. Then for the next category, this is another rank just below this is called that rating is called double A that you can say that they are judged to be high quality and however and subject to very low credit risk but obviously uh, less than a triple A. And double A this, this also judged to be upper medium grade and subject to low risk. And these are called highly investment grade uh, debt instruments or bonds. Then comes below that you can see that B double A uh, you can say the medium grade and subject to moderate credit risk and may possess uh, certain speculative characteristics. Then comes B A and B. So for example here you can see that B they are actually denoted as high credit risk. And they also give further they give the ratings much if the credit risk is very high the, the credit risk is very high. Um, they see that based on their uh, applying their criteria if they find out that default risk is very high then they will be giving CA and further they will give BC, CA, C, AAA, CA and C. So C, C means actually these are all called mainly junk bonds uh, that means the credit risk is very high that the default risk is very high. Similarly they also do the global short term rating scale. This is mainly for the, the short term what they do for the criteria the terminology they use is notation they use is P1 that is prime 1 reflect superior ability to repay short term obligations then P2 and then P3 and finally they give the ratings of NP that means not prime they do not fall within any of the prime rating categories that means they say that the default risk is very high. This also we can relate it with the long term with uh, uh, we can find some comparisons uh, so you can see that the AAA this one is almost similar to prime one the long term the relationship between long term and short term and here yeah, A3 till BA it can be if almost similar to prime two or this much uh, this one is equal to denoting prime three. Again, I am also to, uh, pasting here the linkage between long term and US municipal short term debt and demand obligation ratings. So this also just for your understanding. 
so you know that there are uh, different rating agencies so what are the because these are the different rating agencies maybe rating same government maybe rating same bonds they will be rating same debt instrument they will be rating so they are comparable you can see that uh, when it comes to the maximum prime prime maximum safety all of them give the same notation that triple a then comes slightly difference that a, a1 by moody's a plus by snp uh, that AA plus M by Fitch almost that means these are high grade quality. So similarly when you go further you can see that maybe this one this is called speculative that the BA2, BB and BB this is speculative bond that is called uh, young bonds. So just above so you can say these are non-investment grade uh, bonds. So the point here is that actually so when the ratings are very high then these are called prime maximum safety that means the risk is very low then when they get lower ratings that means that the, that actually a certificate that the, the probability of their default uh, default risk increases when the rating is low default risk is will increase then we will see that when lower the ratings when the default risk is very high when the rating is very low for example junk then the they find it difficult to get uh, the demand for their bonds will be this kind of debt instruments will be less that means they have to pay high rate of interest. So that means the rate of interest for a prime maximum safety kind of bonds or debt instruments is going to be low and for when they, the rating increase then the rate of interest increases. So from this uh, what you can see that may I have seen shown here that the ratings when they get a high ratings this is called prime ma the maximum safety or high quality debt instruments. However, sometime some of the angels maybe the we say that the high quality bonds those who are getting AA, AA1, AA2 or consider as high quality that they are concerns the high quality bonds but sometimes they may fall uh, maybe they may the high quality their high ratings the high quality bonds uh, their quality may their ratings uh, declines in the future because um, their risk the default risk increases and they can be become the a kind of fallen angel fallen angel is a bond that has been reduced to junk status because it issuer has fallen into a financial trouble maybe at the time of getting the ratings they may be either either in all these category but later on you can see that they may some some of them will become fallen angel this exactly happened during 2007-8 financial crisis many top rated companies that is who got the top ratings for their debt instruments uh, they become fallen angel during uh, the 2007-8 financial crisis so the, what happened that these bonds pay higher returns than investment quality bonds and why they are more riskier. This is just to give you some idea about the different types of gradings for example the, an investment grade who are all getting investment grade and the description is description and for example the examples of issues with bonds outstanding in 2012 for example these companies Microsoft and the country sovereign Canada. So they, they got that triple A and similarly this company the corporate and the government were getting double A like that. So look at for example highly speculative. So you can see here for example Greece, uh, countries like Pakistan, Cuba, uh, Venezuela uh, they are actually having uh, low ratings. Yeah, this is just for your information so you could please go through this description to get a better understanding of this credit rating description. This also shows for the commercial rating, commercial paper ratings, the companies like Coca-Cola, General Electric and Procter & Gamble, they get the P1 that the prime grade. And in addition to as I mentioned that in addition to the ratings of the corporates, they also rate the governments. So this is called sovereign ratings that means rating the governments by rating agencies. To, so to get more idea please visit some of this website uh, the country economy 
uh, com the ratings rating for different countries and you can also there are lots of information in the websites uh, you can see that even wikipedia you can get the list of countries by credit ratings so for example for instance i can say that uh, we can see that uh, nearly 10 11 countries at present they are having the triple a ratings um, having that prime ratings and many other countries they are they are having uh, even junk status grading as well so look at this uh, this i just copied from countryeconomy.com website so this is only a, a screenshot where you can see that us for example is having triple uh, a ratings uh, by moody but prime quality rating by uh, moody's uh, s p and fitch but only double a plus rating by s p but uh, Moody's and Fitch they have given AAA ratings. So from this you can see that uh, different countries the ratings differ. You can see for example yeah when going through that you can get a see that even uh, there is rating difference between agencies but slight differences and overall you can see that uh, there is uh, a high correlation between the ratings and many countries you can see here that they are having low ratings. Uh, for example, however, you can see Australia, for example, you can see that they are having the same rating by uh, all the three agencies, AAA, AAA and AAA. So what are the factors that determines the uh, sovereign ratings? The sovereign rating criteria incorporate the factors that affect a sovereign government's willingness and ability to service uh, its financial obligation to non-official creditors on time and in full. The criteria vary across rating agencies but however overall there is some commonalities. So one you can see that I am just giving five key areas to determine a sovereign ratings. One is called the institutional assessment. Uh, institutional assessment means uh, the institutional and economic profile of the country and institutional and economic assessment. So the overall institutional, the how strong the institution, socio-economic and legal institutions of the country and how strong the economic institution, the economic scenario of the country, uh, that, actually, that is one of the criteria. Then the external assessment will be there, then the fiscal assessment. Whether the and similarly the monetary assessment about the fiscal assessment, what is the fiscal position of the country that the uh, whether the country is having fiscal deficit or fiscal uh, balance or fiscal surplus or even if fiscal deficit how uh, what is the scenario current scenario whether it is a really very high fiscal deficit whether it is increasing over time or it is declining over time whether government is making deliberate effort to reduce the fiscal deficit systematically. So this is called the flexibility and performance profile. This all be also will be included or considered in this uh, rating criteria. So that means these are the key factors, then they de develop an indicative level, then based on this each agencies. Uh, because each of these rating agencies, they will be using their own framework, uh, not necessarily exactly the one mentioned here, but overall. Uh, these are the factors they take into account. The, um, even the monetary assessment, how the, the monetary policy, the monetary institution, how independent is the central bank and how robust are there with their economic policy making, the interference with the economy, how all these factors they take into account. I just posted here some of the, the credit rating for India for the last couple of years and you can see that our ratings is called for example features given triple B minus uh, that is in June 10, uh, 2022. Obviously this is not a good sign, not a high ratings that means they rated somewhere below the medium uh, investment quality. Fitch, Moody's like that and you can see that DBRS they have given this one. These are all they have given during this time period. And here also you can also see that they also give an outlook, uh, outlook or watches uh, for the agencies 
for example, positive somewhere here, but the here we had positive in 2015. Uh, what is positive means that a rating may be raised in the future. That means if they have we had BA3, then in the future, if we continue our economy is performing the way it has been doing, then in the future is going to be increased. The, the rating will be raised from BA to the next higher level. Then negative means, uh, negative means a rating may be lowered. That means here, in this time, economy is going to thumb up situation according to these rating agencies. So, they may uh, lower, uh, downgrade our ratings. Stable means rating is not likely to change in the future. So, that currently, uh, for example, Fitch uh, in June 2022, uh, they have, uh, their outlook about India is uh, stable. So, what are the reasons and consequence of poor sovereign ratings? So, the one of the reason I mentioned that the fiscal deficit is one of the criteria for sovereign ratings. So, high fiscal deficit will lead to low sovereign ratings, which would lead to high rate of interest. When you we are getting low ratings, when our sovereign ratings declines, it also means that uh, low sovereign ratings means uh, the country has to pay high rate of interest uh, when the when they borrow by issuing suppose the government issue uh, bonds whenever government is issuing bonds they have to pay high rate of interest when we are getting low sovereign ratings because low ratings means high risk uh, high risk means uh, the rate of interest also has to be high so which would lead to high rate of interest and then not only that many foreign governments won't allow their companies especially pension funds and insurance companies they won't be allowed to invest in those countries with a low sovereign ratings and it has uh, implication for economic growth as well because when the sovereign rating is very low, uh, the foreign direct investment will come down because they see that uh, the country has high risk, uh, sovereign uh, high risk is there, uh, default risk is very high. So, other factors, so the political and economic stability, credit worthiness, this all will be this is actually a factor actually as I mentioned, poor political and economic, if there is instability in political political context and economic system, economic institu institutions are weak, then it will adversely affect uh, the ratings of the country. So, we want to see that the impact of rating on yields, this is the main point here, we need to summarize the discussion. That means, when higher the ratings, we can see that the rate of interest will be low, they have to pay low rate of interest, uh, they can borrow. Uh, they can supply bonds and they can borrow at a low rate of interest. When the rating is very high, the those bonds which, which is having high rating, they are having low default risk and they will be, they are considered as uh, benchmark bonds. So, in the global scenario, the US Treasury bills are considered as the benchmark bonds. So, they are the benchmark bonds and their yields on other bonds and are measured in terms of the spread over the treasuries. So, a bond yield, for example, the bond yield in India, uh, it will be measured or expressed in this way, for example, US Treasury yield, that is the benchmark bond, plus uh, suppose the bond yield, for example, in India, for example, 8 percentage, uh, suppose the US Treasury yield is 2 percentage, uh, 2 percentage and remaining 6 is, is the risk premium, default risk premium that is called 6 percentage, right. So, this is the way we express the bond yield, US Treasury yield and plus default risk premium. So, this 6 percentage is the default risk premium that means when our ratings improve, uh, when it is become equal to for example, the benchmark bond, this will become 0. In the next session, we will continue this discussion. Thank you.